Drifting power bait for rainbow trout is super effective, but it's not actually as simple as it seems. You know, a lot of people will just tell you, oh, it's stock trout fishing, it's not that deep, but there is a little bit of technique involved in drifting power bait. Now there's two scenarios where I'll actually use the power bait. The first one is if I'm, say I'm casting a spinner and I'm reeling it in and I see multiple fish following it, but they don't really seem interested in it. So what I'll do is I'll switch the power bait and it usually lands me a fish or two. And the second one will be if it's, there's a really slow and deeper section of the river that I really know there's fish in. Like it could be a spot where they, they just threw them off the bridge. Like you really gotta know if the fish are there. And power baits, in my opinion, it's not really good at covering a lot of water you're gonna get hung up on the bottom sometimes it's just it's not as effective as say throwing a spinner or jerk bait and bringing in as many fish as possible so the rig is really simple all you're gonna need is a size 8 bait holder hook what I've been using that works really well is the power bait little magnum eggs it comes in like a little string and you're gonna want to buy this instead of the play-doh stuff that you roll into a ball because the little power eggs will stay on the hook a lot better I've caught multiple fish on just one bait so so it works pretty good. And then as far as split shots go, you just, it depends on how quick or slow your river's moving. So just bring a bunch of, bring an assortment of split shots to the river. And the split shot should be about a foot above the hook. That's what I found to work pretty good. So now I'm going to draw out what you might experience at the river and what my technique is that I use. Here's your river. Just basic river. And you've determined that there's some fish here, so you're going to use the power bait. So this is us right here. We're just going to be standing here, a little red dot. What a lot of people, including myself, would think to do is to just cast it upstream and let it drift all the way down. But I found that that's not the most effective way to do it. So if you cast upriver, you have slack in your line. And a slack line will cause the split shot to immediately sink down to the bottom. And you're going to get hung up there. You're not going to cover a lot of water. So what I like to do is we'll erase this. What I like to do is cast right in front of me and then keep my line tight so that we get something that looks more like this. This is the kind of path that we get. So it's going to come in more towards the bank. And what this allows you to do is like keeping your line tight and also keeping your rod higher up will allow the the power bait to drift just above the bottom without it actually getting hung up on rocks and stuff. And it also keeps your bait in the strike zone of the fish for longer. So again, keep your line tight and keep your rod higher up and that will help you stay in that zone consistently throughout the drift. And you know, you'll catch most of the fish in around this zone. Right here is where I caught most of the fish. The reason being for that is I think the power bait isn't quite getting deep enough right here. So once it hits that strike zone about right here, that's when you're going to have a chance to get a fish. Again, this is just what I've experienced, so I just want to kind of share it with you. And another common thing I see is, oh, there goes our river, big drought. I've done this myself too, so, so you know, you do a cast here, but the thing is, you just let it keep going down the river. And I found that it's not really effective because... Like let's say your bale's open and you're just letting line fly out. You're not going to really feel the bites and you're just going to be dragging bottom the entire time. So you're going to get hung up too. It's just not a super effective way. What you should do is just move down, move yourself down and then cast, cast back out and then do the whole little curve thing I told you about earlier. It's always good to just move yourself instead of letting something drift all the way down the river. The way that you know you have a bite or a fish on, what the hell was that? <laughs> You'll know if you have a bite. It'll be multiple like like that. Or it'll just be one big like that. Uh, you'll know. A snag, you'll kind of feel the weight load onto the rod. So just give it a jerk and it should come out. But you'll know if there's a bite. And once you get that bite, depending on if you're meat fishing or not, you're going to want to set it quick if you're not fishing for meat because you don't want to gut hook the fish. They always seem to choke the power bait if you let them bite it too long. So what I'll do is I'll just feel a couple of taps, wait like literally a second and just set the hook. And the hookup ratio is usually pretty good. So you're not going to lose a lot of fish like you would the spinner. But yeah, man, that's pretty much how I fish power bait. I don't use it to search for fish. I use it when I know there's fish there. Like I said, I use a tight line, hold the rod higher up. So that way I stay in that zone where the fish are gonna be. You're not gonna get as long as a drift, but 
you should get some fish. If you're covering a lot of water, it won't really matter. Your drift length won't matter at all. So yeah, dude, I hope that helps. Hope you catch some more fish next time. And tomorrow will be an absolute, what's the word? You should watch tomorrow's video is what I'm trying to say. It was, it was crazy. I just got off the water about an hour ago. Whew, what a day. You're not going to want to miss it. I'll break that all that down, and I'll see you tomorrow. Peace.